Good morning, everyone. My name is Cuiponca Sochi, Diana Moreno Sandoval, Miranda Cifuentes, Ureño Frutos Perez Torres, descendant of the Cascan peoples of Zacatecas, Mexico. I give thanks and honor to the original peoples of this land and this land that we find ourselves on here today. How many of us are wearing a computer? How many of us brought their cell phones with them? Do you have one? Almost everybody. How many of us brought a laptop? To what extent are daily activities shaped by these technological devices? Whose worldviews are represented in the science behind the creation and production of these advanced technologies? Whose worldviews are missing? Have we ever considered the material that is used to produce these digital advancements? What happens to that material after it has been quickly usurped by the next generations of digital production? Are these technological advancements sustainable? I asked myself these questions after conducting research on a project during my doctoral work funded by the National Science Foundation and UCLA Center X and with the goal of broadening participation in computing, one of the most segregated fields in education. Computer science education is not offered in many high schools, especially among underserved populations in the inner cities. For example, in Arizona, only 190 students took the Advanced Placement Computer Science High School exam in 2013. You can see the disparities by group here. Furthermore, in 2013, no female students took the AP Computer Science class exam in three states, Mississippi, Montana, and Wyoming. The lack of diversity in computer science education continuously sets the stage for the national computing workforce. In 2013, only 26% of that workforce were female. And of those female workers, only 2% represented the ethnic makeup of the entire Americas. While many of us are computer science consumers in terms of mobile technology and web networks, only a small portion of our population produces the underlying innovations in computer science technology. Efforts by the US Department of Education and the National Science Foundation, as well as Code.org, a nonprofit organization have led efforts to increase diversity in computing. For example, a 10 by 10 by 10 initiative to train 10,000 teachers in 10,000 schools in 10 years. Yet, there is no systematic effort in these initiatives to address another concerning part of digital innovation. In addition to being one of the most racially segregated and gendered fields in education, computer science poses a serious threat to environmental sustainability. For example, as a product of military engineering, computer science relies heavily on electricity, water usage, and e-waste landfills to operationalize data centers. The real price of our love affair with faster and more efficient technologies are the unintended consequences of excess water use and pernicious mountains of toxic e-waste. In, in 2009, over 2 million tons of e-waste were discarded into landfills. And in Utah, the U.S. National Security Agency's massive data de uh, center consumes 1.5 million gallons of cooling water each Day. What can the diversity of worldviews in the creation and production of computer science teach us about sustainability efforts? In 2010, Bolivia's Plurinational Legislative Assembly passed the Law of the Rights of Mother Earth. The law contains 10 articles that posit the physical and social world on an equal footing highlighting the interdependence of these two worlds. For example, the law affirms that Mother Earth has the right to clean water 
and uncontaminated air. Elements that are not only necessary for the survival of plant and animal nations, but for the survival of human beings. This positioning of all forms of life as interdependent of one another is a fundamental worldview held by indigenous peoples worldwide. But what do the law of the rights of Mother Earth and the efforts to increase computer science education have in common? Equally important, what do they not have in common? And why are indigenous worldviews systematically denied entrance into computer science classrooms? Is our goal simply to engage a more diverse population to create more innovations in computer science without thinking about the detrimental consequences that this production has on our Mother Earth? It is important to start with the visions of diverse communities and assess whether or not computer science production is appropriate to carry out those visions, rather than begin with romanticizing computer science as a silver bullet that will solve our complex societal problems. Similarly, we must decide how sustainability is to be prioritized if computer science is to act as a medi mediating tool to achieve those goals. Over the course of three years, my research has woven together ancestral knowledge systems and computer science education through the participation of Itzel, a high school junior at the time and a self-identified Mexicana across three communities of practice. Can you change it to this? A student-led organization whose primary focus is to revitalize Mexican ancestral knowledge systems a project-based computer science classroom that teaches technological aspects of computational thinking, and a larger interdisciplinary schooling community of these three classes, of three classes and the parent center of a Northeast Los Angeles community. While leading in the efforts to revitalize ancestral knowledge systems of agriculture and food practices in a student-led organization, Itzel also led a participatory sensing campaign in her computer science class that included developing a mobile application to conduct a research project that assessed her community's food and drink practices. Itzel's computational artifacts drew upon computing, symbology, storytelling, and critical inquiry to successfully navigate the juncture between her academic and cultural identities around her community's food and drink practices. Later, she shared the results to a larger schooling community using an animation software in which she used, she learned programming skills. Itzel's leadership intersected with the movement toward health promotion and she participated in transforming an abandoned lot on her high school campus into a community garden that continues to flourish today. In my participatory research, I discovered that ancestral stories, coupled with computational inquiry and purpose, equipped Itzel to accomplish significant feats. I will mention four. Here is a visual representation of the complexity of her participation across three communities of practice. First, she improved her computational thinking practices, such as abstraction and data analysis. Second, she participated in civic engagement, including public expressions of her ancestral knowledge systems. Third, she affirmed her academic and cultural identities, especially in computer science and her ancestral Mexican identity. Finally, she learned computer science as a mediating tool to benefit the larger visions of her schooling community. Critical indigenous approaches to learning are conspicuously absent from the dominant methods of computer science education. As one of the least represented women in computer science education, Itzel's leadership in computing has led us to think of a new way of thinking about computer science education, 
one that is called ancestral computing for sustainability. Ancestral computing for sustainability is a conceptual framework that interweaves ancestral knowledge systems with computer science education, with and for the larger purposes of social, environmental, and economic sustainability. It says ancestral knowledge engagement in a field that has systematically denied her entrance informs the ways in which underrepresented female students positively engage in computer science production. It says identity, learning, and civic engagement have broad implications for how underrepresented students make meaning in segregated fields. We all have ancestral knowledge systems somehow. Herbal medicine practices, stories about animals, songs, for example. Each of our ancestors have left us with instructions about how to pay attention to and care for Mother Earth, as if our collective lives depend on it, because they do. However, not all human beings exist on the same playing field. While revitalizing ancestral knowledge systems, we must unfold and address the uneven distributions of power in fields like computer science and end all forms of hegemony so that all human beings have the opportunity to live, learn, and die with dignity. One day, one way that I have been inspired to do this work is by keeping the songs that my grandmother has taught me alive. She is 97. Her songs and the songs of my distant ancestors are encoded with worldviews about time and space, including instructions about the interdependence of the social and physical realms. I will end with one of those songs that my maternal grandmother learned during the times of the Mexican Revolution. It is about a colorful bird bringing joy to the people in difficult times. Some of you have heard this song before. Paloma Blanca, de cinco colores, blanco, amarillo, morado, nevado y azul. Y al verla tenía el buchi blanco, el pico amarillo, las alas moradas, la cola nevada y el copete azul. Paloma Blanca, que vienes del norte, con tus anchas alas volas para acá. Que viva la generación, que viva el placer, que viva el amor, y vámonos a pasear. Computer science inextricably shapes our lives. Itzel taught us that nurturing her ancestral knowledge systems and establishing visions for her community were central to her engagement with computer science education. How might computer science creation and production continue if they are inclusive of a diverse set of ancestral worldviews? Ancestral computing for sustainability may lead us to prioritizing the health of the bird nations and all other forms of life as interdependent on one another. Thank you.